Hi, I'm Stephen Power. I'm a photographer and teacher based on Valencia in County Kerry, Ireland. Welcome to my series of teaching videos. This one is about understanding and using depth of field for the best creative effects in your photography. Hi, so in this video I'm going to talk about depth of field, which for me is one of the most creative techniques in photography, but it's also one that a lot of people find confusing um, and hard to use sometimes. So let's um, start with the definition of depth of field, which is the area in front and behind the subject that is also sharp when the subject is in focus. So let's break that down into its various components. Let's imagine that here you are with your camera and in front of you is a landscape scene. You've got a, a tree quite close to the camera, a house with its gable end pointing on, so the house is going away from you, um, and the mountains in the background. Now, let's decide that you want to photograph the house, or the house is going to be the most important thing in your scene. So that is the subject. The subject is the thing that you want to show most of all in the photograph. And you've got to know what the subject is before you take the picture. Otherwise, it's not really going to work. So in this case, the subject is the house. And we're going to focus on it about halfway along. So I'll draw a little... Imagine this is your focusing point in the camera, the little red square that you see when you focus. Get that right over the subject. Get it on the subject and in the part of the subject that you want to be clearest, particularly if you're using a wide aperture, because depth of field is connected to the aperture that you use and also where and how you focus in the scene. So let's say you've chosen um, an aperture of f2, or one of the lower aperture numbers, f1.8 even, 1.4, f2, up to about f4. These are regarded as wide apertures. They let a lot of light into the scene, and the opening in the lens is very, uh, very wide. So, this gives what's known as a shallow depth of field, meaning that the focus, if it's on the house, isn't going to spread very far at all from the focusing point. So let's say at an aperture of f2, you're focused here in the middle. The focusing point may only spread to there and to there. This is the depth of the field of focus, or the depth of field. It's the area of focus in front of and behind the subject. Now, see the way I've drawn these lines, I know they're a bit crooked, but they're also at different um, distances from the focused point. Okay, because roughly speaking, not absolutely, um, but roughly speaking, the depth of field moves one third forward from the focused point and two thirds back. Now, let's say that we've, for argument's sake, we've used a different focusing point. Let's say we've focused on these mountains in the background. Now, the mountains are often in a scene at infinity, meaning that they're about as far as they can go. So the focusing point, if on the mountains, isn't going to spread anywhere. It's going to be 
basically where you focused and slightly just in front. And then it's gonna go backwards to infinity. Basically to nowhere because there's nowhere for it to go. So if you're focusing in a landscape at whatever aperture you use, focusing right at the back of the, of the scene is pointless because you're losing a lot of the depth of field that you might have in the aperture, even if your aperture was at f16. So we'll go to the other extreme of the apertures, the very small apertures, say f16. Now we focus on the house again. Now this time, the depth of field is going to be broader, wider, because the aperture is smaller, the light is being squeezed as it comes through the hole in the lens, and the sharpness extends further. So we might get quite a lot of sharpness, depending on the lens that you use. We might go from the focus point on the house to maybe just somewhere around the tree, if not in front of the tree, and, and all the way back to the mountains. That's quite possible. So we've got this very broad depth of field at um, a small aperture, f16, f11, those, those sorts of apertures. If we were, for example, to use um, a middling aperture, something like f8, then the depth of field might spread. Still a reasonable amount of uh, amount of way, but perhaps not all the way um, to the tree, and not all the way to the mountains. Focus this time on the front of the scene. Let's focus on the tree. The depth of field will move forward. and some way back, maybe as far as the house. Now, what's interesting here again, as we did with the mountains, is that there's nothing in front of the tree to be in focus. So focusing here was a bit of a waste, unless we only wanted the house and the tree to be sharp. If we wanted the mountains to be sharp, then we would have had to have focused somewhere else. And this is my general rule for focusing in a landscape. Because the depth of field will move one third forward and two thirds back from the focused point, then as a rule of thumb, it's a good idea to focus one third into the scene. So in this case, the focusing point might actually be here, which seems to make no sense at all because there's no subject there. But if we focused, and often focused manually, this is a good way to do it, if we focused about one third into the scene, then the depth of field will move forward roughly one third <clears throat> and back roughly two thirds. So we might, if we're very careful with the focusing point, allow, at a small aperture, again around f11, f16, we might allow the depth of field to spread throughout the whole scene. So let's do a, a quick recap on this. Depth of field is controlled by the aperture that you set in the lens and where you focus in the scene. Small apertures like f11, f16 will give a broad depth of field which will extend a long way either side of the focused point. A wide aperture, such as f1.4, f2, f4, will give a shallow depth of field that will only extend a small way from the focused point. A couple of other important things to mention as well. The depth of field at any focused point with any aperture 
will vary according to the focal length of the lens. So for example, if you were photographing this scene at f11 with a wide angle lens, you would get a very broad depth of field. In fact, for the depth of field to be that broad with a wide angle lens, you might not even need to use a small aperture. If lens you were using was a telephoto lens, a long lens, maybe something like 200 millimeter and longer, then the depth of field will actually be less broad, more shallow at the same aperture. So using f11 will give you less sharpness from the focused point. And this is a you know fairly complex topic, but one that can be very useful, extremely creative once you get your head around it. Um, leave me a comment below, ask a question, and um, I hope this has been helpful for you.